We're seeing cases climb again, which means it is time to see Dr. Ruth Bergren again. She is in the house today for our KSAT Q&A, infectious disease specialist with UT Health San Antonio, the Long School of Medicine. Dr. Bergren, thank you for being here. We always appreciate seeing you. And we do have some numbers to talk about in terms of an increase in COVID here locally. So explain where we are right now uh, at this point in the pandemic. Thank you. It's good to be back with you, Steve and Myra. Um, so we need to let people know that we're seeing an uptick. All right. Um, we've gone from a community positivity rate around 1.2% at the end of March to now 5.2%. So we went up almost by a factor of five from the end of March, beginning of April here to the beginning of May. And this is consistent with what's going on nationally throughout the country with a 50% rise in cases in the last two weeks. Um, along with that and helping us understand it is the emergence of some new variants that we're hearing about from South Africa, the BA4 and the BA5 variants. They're very closely related to Omicron. They're more infectious. They don't seem to be causing more severe illness, but they are driving increases in symptomatic infections. And that is because a prior infection with Omicron is not protecting people against getting symptomatic BA4 or BA5. Good news again is that it's not severe disease, but we are seeing a lot of cases. So you're not seeing the hospitalizations, but that doesn't mean that this is something that people should just you know shrug off. I mean, this is something that people do get sick from. Yeah, so it's true that we're not seeing a rise in hospitalization, and we're really grateful for that. And I don't want people to be feeling frightened uh, about something dire. Um, but these infections are no fun. So I'm personally treating about four patients right now, right, this, as we speak, um, with antiviral medication. And these are folks who are relatively healthy, who are completely vaccinated and got their at least their first booster. So they've had three shots but they get COVID and they feel awful. And at first they think it's a mild scratchy throat or maybe some allergies, then they get the cough, then the cough starts to move down deeper into their chest and they get scared, that's when I hear from them. And here's what people need to know. There's an opportunity to get tested and treated. There's actually an initiative now called Test to Treat. And we have a couple of places around town, including at Centro Med's Palo Alto site, where you can go and you can be tested for COVID if you have symptoms, and this will not cost you any money. If you are COVID positive, you will be given a treatment. And there's two really important treatments available right now. One is a pill kind of treatment. So you take three pills twice a day for five days. They're called Paxlovid, and they're really effective at decreasing the need for hospitalization, about 80 to 88 to 89% decrease in the need for hospitalization. And we still have monoclonal antibody infusion as an option that can decrease the rate of hospitalization for COVID-19. Now, you know, when we first started hearing about those two treatments, we were talking about, you know, the conditions that people may have that qualified them for those. Or is it more wide open now in terms of who can actually get either the monoclonal antibody or Paxlovid? Right. So. We still have a plan to prioritize, especially for the monoclonal antibodies. Anybody who's going to go get that infusion has to have a healthcare provider put in data about them on a portal. And that will include how old they are, whether they have high blood pressure, whether they have um, high body mass index, they're overweight, that's a risk factor. And then based on all of the, num the number of comorbidities, meaning additional risk factors, those people will get in line prioritized. And then with respect to the Paxlovid, we know that it works best for the people that are at highest risk. So super healthy young people with symptomatic COVID probably don't need this, especially if they've been fully vaccinated. But anybody who's older or who has any one of these risk factor conditions um, is eligible for that treatment and doctors can prescribe it. I want to work through some of the booster questions that we've been getting. We've been getting a lot of viewers that are asking questions about booster shots. If you've already had your, your up to date on your booster shots, is it time to get another one? And is that just for anybody or is it certain risk groups that you're looking at? 
who should be looking at getting another booster shot? I'll try to tell it in the most simple and understandable way possible, Steve. Um, it should have at least four months need to have gone by since your third dose for you to need a fourth dose. In addition, you should be over the age of 50 years or over the age of 12 plus you have a problem such as an immunocompromising condition, such as you take immunosuppressives for an autoimmune disease or you have cancer or you have AIDS or something like that, an organ transplant. So if you are over the age of 50 or over the age of 12 plus you have an immunocompromising condition and it's been at least four months since you had your third shot, you are eligible to go and get your booster, which is your fourth shot. A little bit of COVID math there for all of us. Before we let you go here, let's um, talk really quickly about kids under five. What's the latest on when they may be able to get a vaccine? So there is some activity there. Um, Moderna uh, recently announced that they are um, getting ready to get all their data presented to the FDA. Uh, I think by May 9th, and then it's going to be early June um, before the FDA has their committee meet to review all the data about young children. And we can hopefully expect some guidelines about vaccinating children under the age of five sometime in June. Sounds good. Dr. Ruth Bergeron, UT Health San Antonio infectious disease doctor. Always appreciate your time and your input on all of these many questions that we have. So good to be with you, Steve and Myra. We'll see you next time.